guys, Steven here from Double O. Got Sharon here. We're gonna go out on the boat today. Hopefully catch some catfish. Got another video. Got another video for you guys uh, revolving around the catfish. So if I catch them, then uh, I got a little educational clip. So yeah, stay tuned. Good size catfish. There you go. Nice channel cat. Perfect eating size. There we go. Pretty channel cat. It's got a real shimmery, real shimmery. Okay. How you doing, guys? We just got back from the uh, catfishing trip. We got a couple, not much, but anyway, point is we got one, so. I'm going to show you guys how to fillet a catfish. Now, most people think you need to go through this extravagant process of nailing them to a board and, you know, skinning them and it's all this hard work and all this stuff, but you really don't have to do that. And most people think catfish is a trash fish and it's just, you know, it's the hated fish of all fishes for some reason, them and carp. But in all reality, flathead catfish especially taste incredibly good. You can make it taste just as good as rockfish in my opinion. And even Channel Cat is extremely good. So for those of you who don't know, watch and learn. Okay, so as is with any kind of processing, when it comes to fish or meats or anything, a good sharp knife, especially with fish because you got the scales, a good sharp knife is important. So when you got your good sharp knife, then you need your fish. Bam! You're just going to make a cut straight down to the spine. A little difficult because I'm trying to do it, uh, you know, at this weird angle. But anyway, you're going to make a cut straight to the spine. When you hit the spine, you're going to turn your knife like this, and you're going to press it down. You don't worry about the bottom of the blade, only the top. If the top of the blade's where you want it to be, the whole rest of the blade will fall in line. And all you're doing with this blade is making it an extension of your fingers. So you want to kind of make the blade like it's part of your hand. So you really just want to feel everything with that knife. You want to feel the contact of the knife along the spine you want to like I said make an extension of your fingers an extension of your hand and in doing that you're gonna get a nice crisp perfect clean fillet so I'm gonna turn it this way so I can actually do it efficiently and it doesn't matter see the guts coming out that doesn't matter as long as the top of that knife's where it needs to be the bottom of that knife does not matter It'll, it'll fall right into place. And you're just coming down the spine, just like that. And right before you get to the end of the tail, you stop. You don't have to, but it makes it easier. Then you flip that fillet over. Get all that junk out of there. That's a piece of stomach section. See this little stomach section here? You don't want that. That's nasty. So I go in, cut that out. You could do this before you take it off the skin or after, it doesn't matter. I just did it now just to get it out of the way. Okay, so there's your fillet. I'm gonna do this one nice and slow so you guys see it, and then I'll do the next one how I normally do it. You start up here and you make a small cut just like that. Once you got your cut, you put your fingers in where you just cut, hold it down, however it's comfortable for you. Make sure you're nice in there, and you press that. You press your knife. You need a flexible knife. You press it dead even, flush with the cutting board, and you just work your knife along. Once you can cut enough of meat of the way like that, grab the fillet itself because it's still on the catfish. Hold it firm and work with your hand back while you're moving your knife forward. And boom, there's your fillet. Easy as one, two, three. You don't need to do all that extra work of nailing them to the tree and whatever else. 
perfect fillet just like that nice clean what's well, not clean because it's dirty you know you have to, after your fillet comes off you obviously gotta you know go run it under some cold water rub it with your thumbs get all that nasty junk off there uh and what makes it taste so good well no let me start by saying what makes it taste so bad is that generally people see this line right here this darker meat in here and the little lines right there generally people leave that in there and then they get catfish and say why does this catfish taste so nasty catfish tastes fishy it's nasty it's you know it tastes like mud that's because they leave all this junk on there see this yellow meat on the ends over here you got this white stuff over here you got these little pieces that kind of flare out like little uh they're, it's like shaped weird you want to cut all that junk off so you start by the edge and people might think you know you might think you're wasting a lot of meat but you cut it's all junk that you're cutting off there's nothing you want to really eat anyway so i start by doing that exactly cut off the ends all that yellow meat i don't want to eat that makes it taste nasty not to mention on this side all that right there in the middle that, that middle where the lateral line is that holds all the toxins all the mercury all the negative chemicals that that fish picks up throughout its entire life that lateral line right there holds all of that so when you're eating that it's not only making it taste disgusting but it's very unhealthy too so in order to get that out and you can be as picky as you want you can get all of it or just some of it or none of it it's up to you but what I do is I go in here and I just slice a little V all the way down slice a V on that side I mean I slice down that side and then angle my knife in and slice all the way down that side and what that did was make a little V take that off and generally it'll pull right out there's your lateral line all that nasty junk gone and you still will have and then I just cut it like that and I just cut it in half and you still will have some leftover like you can see all this junk just take your knife just very carefully and so you don't waste a lot of meat because this was a small catfish as it is so you don't have a lot of meat to work with but just get all that junk out of there I'll leave that piece on there to show you the difference. See that real clean meat and then that nasty stuff? When it looks like that, that's when it's going to be good to eat. Taste-wise, health-wise, everything. This piece, I don't know if you can tell, but that's nice, good, clean meat. That still has those brown marks on it. That piece, if you tried to cut all that off, you would end up with a piece that's not even thick enough to eat. So what I do, just boom. Take that little tag end off. And there you go. It seems like a waste. It seems like, you know, out of a maybe 18, 19 inch fish, you only got a five inch fillet and not very thick, whatever. You know, but like I said, that's why generally I don't keep fish, I don't keep catfish that small because you don't get much meat off of them when you process them this way. But the big ones, you get a lot of meat and when you clean them up like this, it actually tastes good. Obviously, like I said, see all the dirt and everything in there still. When you are done with this, this is perfectly finished. It's got everything cut off the ends, you know, nothing, no junk left on there, nothing. So what I do then is I take it and I put it in some ice water and let it soak with salt. There's salt in there. The salt is going to help get any blood and stuff like that out. Okay. So now, same thing with this one. I just go over it. Nothing really to cut off from the ends because I already did that. The middle where I cut the lateral line out looks pretty good, except this tiny little bit here. Just that I'm really, really picky when, with what goes into my body. So, I mean, they say you are what you eat. So, some of you are probably like, you know, you don't got to be that picky. You're wasting a lot of meat, whatever. But this is just me. I'm just giving my input and showing you guys how I do things. It'll help some of you. Some of you won't get anything out of this. But if I help one person, then it was worth it so anyway now that that's done again on this one you can see that there's this nice smooth meat and then there's this bumpy stuff with the brown on it 
This on the other hand is thick enough to where if you cut that away, you will still have good um, a good amount of meat to eat. So what I do is I start where it starts, put my thumb there, and I take the blade of the knife and just very gently graze it away. Just I'm barely letting the knife, this is why a really good sharp knife comes in handy. I'm barely, I'm not digging at all. I'm just grazing it. Just grazing the surface. And see the difference now? Still a little bit of brown on there. See the difference now? Where all that was? Nice and clean. Get all that dark colored stuff out of there. Yes, it's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, when you get a whole bunch of fish, it's worth it. And then when you get down to this piece, it's thin. Like I said, just cut that end off because it's no point in messing with it anyway. And now you got that nice clean piece with no junk on it. Put that in the salt water, let it soak. And then when that's done, all you got is your junk right here. You toss your junk. You got your two good clean fillets in here. And then what I do is I take those in the house and I take them under the sink water, run them under the sink, get rub them with my thumbs, get all that, uh, you know, all the dirt, all the extra blood, all the junk out so it's nice, clean, pretty white meat. And then you can either from right there cook it or freeze it and cook it later. And that's the whole process. So, yeah, there you go. Now you guys know. Okay, so I figure since I showed you the first half of the process, I'll show you the full thing. So what you got here is the two fillets that I showed you guys earlier. The next step, you roll them in the mayonnaise. And you roll them in my Pop-Pops secret, super secret, special seasoning, breading, whatever. And you got yourself some oil, lemon juice. Well, first, before you put them in the mayonnaise, you put the lemon juice on them. Then you're good. But uh, this is just my preference. I also like grilling it. Grilling it is extremely good, and it's better for you. Um, there's a million different ways, a million different oils you can use. You can use eggs instead of mayonnaise to make the breading stick, uh, you know. So it's all preference. Sometimes people put Old Bay, sprinkle some Old Bay, whatever. You don't got to use a lemon juice. I just like the way it tastes. There's a, you can be creative, do your own thing, but I'm just showing you how I do it. So, you take the filet, get it all covered in the mayonnaise, roll it around in that breading. I forgot to put the lemon juice on. Oh well, you can always put the lemon juice on after you are ready to eat it. When it's fully done, doesn't really matter. Same thing, take this one, roll it in the mayonnaise. Then you roll it in the breading. Make sure it's nice and fluffy covered. Oh god. Then they're ready to go. That oil's heating up nicely. Rinse my hand off here. Uh, for sanitation reasons, I'll get back to you guys in a second. I gotta actually wash my hand, not just rinse it off. Okay, I'm back. So, hands are washed, no cross contamination. And I'm gonna be deep frying, that's why I got so much oil in here. You could just line the bottom of the pan, it all depends on your preference. Or, like I said, grill it, bake it, you know, however. Today, we're deep frying it. Catfish, I like deep frying. Take your tongs, drop it in there, start sizzling. Take your next one, drop it in there, start sizzling. And then, set those there, so again, no cross contamination. Rip a paper towel off. That way you can sit it on there, you don't get your counter dirty, whatever. No cross-contamination. Because it did touch raw fish. Throw this away. Dun, 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 dun. You can't reuse that because it had the raw fish on it. And we're back over here. And you know it's done when it starts floating. And then to test it, if you're not sure still, even if it is floating, all you do is take a fork and you just cut down into it and if it flakes real nicely and just breaks apart it's finished if it feels kind of hard to push through and little, a little bit rubbery you know it needs some more time when one side starts to brown you can look under there and kind of see that means they're ready to flip and like I said they're supposed to be deep fried but 
I didn't quite put enough oil to deep fry. But see how that side looks so much brown, darker, crispier than that side? Flip it over. If they were being deep fried, I wouldn't have had to flip them because it would completely surround the whole thing. Now that the fish is getting done, these tongs still have the raw fish stuff on them. I'm going to let all that cook off that I just touched it with because one side was still raw, but now I can't touch the fish with these tongs again because cross-contamination. You'd be touching what you're about to eat with raw stuff. So what I do is scald it. Scalding hot water. Get all that bacteria off there. Scalding, scalding, scalding. Scalding off these tongs. Then I put some disinfectant on them and word on. I'll be back to ya. Should be getting pretty close to done now. I'm gonna test it out in a minute with the fork. I don't like to actually time it because I like to watch it and tend it the entire time. That way I know exactly when it's done, not a minute over or a minute less or whatever. If you just try to time it and say it takes 12 minutes and you do 12 minutes every time and you change one little thing, your fish might not be done or it might be too done. So I just like to tend it and watch it the whole time. Let's give it the good old fork test. The whole top half flaked real easy if you saw my fork going in, but now right there it won't cut any farther. That tells me it still needs a little bit of time. The top half's done, that bottom half's not. Alright, now because that piece flaked almost all the way down, this piece should flake right in half now, because it's been about three minutes since that last one. And it did, nice and flaky. That side's crispy, not good. A little bit overcooked. That's because I got the heat on 8, and I should have had it on 6. That was my fault. If it would have been on 6, that side wouldn't have burnt like that. But anyway, you get the gist. Burnt it just slightly. Then you take it out. Ba boom Take it out. Ba boom With your cleaned off, sanitized tongs. Make sure. Turn that off. And that is the finished catfish product. Alright, finished fish. I like to put a paper towel on there before you put the fish on to sop up all the grease when you put it on. Get a little bit of lemon juice. Sprinkle it on there. Oh, super hot. Wow. Really hot. Really good though. Really, really good. It's not even burnt. I thought those sides were burnt, but they're not. They're just a little dark. It's a really flaky white meat, as you can see. Super, super good. It tastes amazing because I cut all that junk out. But yeah, see you next time on Double O.